You're a genius. I want to talk to you about church marketing. Here's my opinion. First of all, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new podcast, Bandwidth. We're talking about leadership. We're talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about okay. speak up in the mic, Shanice. Don't be scared. You nervous? No, I'm not nervous. <laughs> As of now, I think it's about like 31,000 people on. Oh. I'm lying. It's 11. Praise the Lord. Prophesy over my own podcast real quick. I'm not about to do that. Come, you a prophet? I'm not about to do that. All right, that. never mind. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord since you can't help me. Uh, <laughs> look. <laughs> look. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I am on this journey of just trying to work out all the kinks to my new podcast called Bandwidth, and it's going to be great. And, you know, first of all, I just love you. Second of all, you have, how long have you been with me? Since, well, you know, got to account for the time I left, but. You did leave. You left and you were trying to find yourself. <laughs> and you, now listen, some people try to, you know what, I have to respect you though, because you tried to find yourself. Well, how long ago was this before I tell everybody your business? Yes. Give me some grace. This was about six years ago. Six years ago. All right. Mm -hmm. So you left me six years ago to find yourself. Now, the thing about you, I have to give you your props. Some people, when they leave and go find themselves, they go to the stupidest places like their cousin house. <laughs> I had to go and just find myself because the church was just suffocating me. So where did you go? Well, my cousin <laughs> wanted me to move in with <laughs> you went to you went in, you went on a world trip. Yes. Where did you go when you left me? <laughs> I went to well, I went to LA first. I stopped in LA. You had to go to LA, huh? Yeah, I had to go and to LA. And then you went to LA. Where where else did you go? Um, I went to Shanghai, China. Shanghai. And, and then going? I went to Thailand. You went to Thailand? Phuket, Thailand. Phuket, Thailand? What? Did you eat something there? Yes, I ate all the food. Was it good? Yes, authentic China and um, Thailand. In comparison to American Chinese food, mm -mm. it's not the it, same? It doesn't even touch it. What? It's The food is so fresh. Um, we used to see some of the workers come with like vegetables. They would be carrying them early in the morning yeah. to, to their facility. Literally carrying it. I don't know where they went. So, to get them. so here, China Wall is not really good. It's not really authentic Chinese food? No, this is... American version of Chinese Man. food. Is it? Listen, they don't put that uh, M, <laughs> that MTV it. in it, do it? No, they don't. They don't use MSG. Everything That's is what I said. It's made healthy, and it's made right in front of you. Really? Literally, you can taste the freshness of the food. That's crazy. Where else did you go to Thailand? Um, I went back to Shanghai. Um, I was supposed to go to Hong Kong, but we didn't make it there, and so I just came on back. Wow. Yeah. All right, so. How long did you leave? I was gone for about a month. And you came back to me. Yes, sir. And you joined and you haven't you haven't gone anywhere since. I was a member before I Oh, left. that's right. You were a member already. <laughs> that's right. You tried to you, why did you leave? Tell the truth. Well, you I, didn't like the church, you didn't like my preaching. No, I told you why I left. I left because I was trying to find my purpose. And before so I So you went to you went to but before you I went joined and got you the some ministry, orange chicken. Before I so to find your purpose, you would have <laughs> You went to get you some <laughs> Before I joined the ministry, I had all that planned. Yeah, and, I, oh, okay. and remember, I told you, I said, hey, like, I had all of this this plan before. I was only a part of the ministry for, like, three, a couple five months. months. Yeah, yeah you, it wasn't you, long. You were fresh me. You were a baby yeah, in Christ. Had, I had already, I had tickets and everything. You weren't even prophesying yet. Now you're prophesying. <laughs> wow. So when, did you find your purpose over there, or did you just find some good Chinese food? I found my purpose. Is something I had all along, and I had to connect to the right person to get it. What? I found, Tell us about that. I found that when you chase and when you when you do all of these things, not trying to say I was trying to keep up with people, but I was just trying to explore. Um, there was really no need for me to explore because everything God wanted me to have was back at home. And so because, you know, I'm new in Christ, I didn't perceive the place I was at to be as big as it was. I I went around the world, you know, to go travel. And we were in a storefront and you're saying that it was in, 
it was in that storefront, that little preacher, that young preacher yes. in that storefront was what you needed to connect to all along. Yes. And you discovered that after coming back. Yes. I'll never, I'll never chase anything again. What I, what I perceive success is or what I perceive, you know, greatness is because I realized literally I connected to you. I wouldn't even say six months, you know, my life started to change. Um, I changed career fields to marketing. I wasn't in marketing before I was doing finance and HR here and there, but literally within six months, my entire life changed. Literally everything about my life changed. And, and what were some of the things that you said, this is what started to, to change my life being connected to me? I would say the first thing is I had peace um Hassan I yeah Keep going. <laughs> I think some of the millennials now they're so confused and they don't have any peace because they're trying to get to the next they're trying to figure out you know how will I build my wealth how will I get to the next level but they don't sit and they don't have that peace where I can just sit and rest in God and say yeah. God's going to order my steps especially through my pastor and so I, I sat down I did what you told me to do you told me what to do I did three things you told me to do I believe I did those things in my life flourish you told me what job to get uh -huh. um you said because that fits you it was making half of what i was used to making um no benefits at all because it was a startup company and then um you told me to get with elder lynn she was going to be my prayer partner my bible partner and it was one more thing i couldn't remember i think you told me to get a car <laughs> yeah because you had no transportation now yeah Searching. I sure did. You were hiking. Oh, don't say that on the live. Don't say that on the live. It's too late. No, don't tell anybody that. Don't tell anybody that. And you got disregard. your car. Disregard. And you got your car. And so, all right. So that was the beginning. Yes. And what has happened since then? So since then, um, that was five, six years ago. Um, so I worked for a startup company doing marketing um, to restart my career because I wasn't in the marketing field. And then I went back to corporate America at Cox Automotive to continue marketing. Then I went back to the startup company, which launched me out into my own company. So now um, I got the experience, you know, I built the discipline like you told us. And then I was able to come out on my own and sustain. So you own your own business now. Yes, sir. What in the world? Yes. So you went from tasting Chinese <laughs> food to hiking to owning your own company. Yes. And what is your company? What Bo do you do? Booming Marketing Consultants. I do marketing for small to mid-sized businesses right now. Uh -huh. um, so we help, basically we help people make money. My focus is to generate results um, and to make people see the actual return on their investment. Wow. And tell me about the process to starting your own company. Because you were not going to do it. Yeah, I wasn't going to do it. What happened? Um, you told me this a while ago. So if I joined the ministry five, six years ago, you told me like year two when I first started doing marketing. Um, I didn't know anything about marketing. I was in a staff meeting trying to fill in for a graphic designer. I know nothing about graphic design. And that's literally how my my journey started. Um, so you started doing graphic design for who? For the ministry for you. Just because I heard um, the graphic designers had, you know, they went ghost. And I did one thing. And then that turned You see, me. hold on. Listen, you see that? Keep, listen, y'all keep going ghost if you want to in ministry. God <laughs> will replace you with people who have, they have a heart for it. And then give them their own business. Booyah, keep going. <laughs> yes, I had no talent whatsoever. Um, and at the time I started, so you didn't, so, so you were trash, yeah, garbage. Yeah. And what happened? Um, I started to just keep wrong at it. I would glean, um, to you and you would say like, no, this is ugly. Do this, do this. You would send me stuff. I like, didn't say it like that. Do I? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you would send me things. You was like, do this, do this. And I just kept working at it for about a year before I got like an actual team before God started to send people. Um, and so with that, I even saw the fruit of it early on, you know, other ministries, I got to do work for other ministries to help. And, you know, I got paid for that, but I literally, I had no, no graphic design talent, no marketing talent. I literally, I switched careers under your leadership. I never would have thought I would be a marketing exec. So Ooh, that's crazy. Yeah. 
That's phenomenal. So you own your own business now. Yes. All right. So this is what I want to talk to you about. Here's my opinion. I think the African-American church is behind culturally. Mm -hmm. I think the pandemic has caused us to catch up to where culture was already going. Yes. And here's what's so sad. There are hundreds of thousands of Protestant churches who still refuse. People, listen, the church thinks that, get this, Shanice, the church thinks that they are innovative because they go live. Yes. The pandemic, look, we're out of, no, we're not out of the pandemic because Marion over here now. <laughs> Good, Marion, oh, Marion came over here now. So, hey, that we thought the pandemic was over. Oh, Mario said, gotcha. <laughs> came right over there. All right, so we, so, so, but, but we're used to it, right? It's, yes. it's a part of our culture. We're adapting to it, right? And so I think the pandemic came and it forced the African, it forced the church by and large, but specifically the African-American church, we've been so behind, mm -hmm. it forced us to kind of catch up. And so now that we are kind of a little, we're, we're, we're I don't want to say caught up, but we are attempting to be progressive. You'll be surprised that a lot of churches think that they're killing it because they are streaming live now, right? Mm -hmm. I think, I think that we are powerful. The church, I love the church. And that's why I can talk about the church because I love the church. I'm an advocate for the church. I believe God has called me to, it's almost like this Paul. I have a, I, I connect with Paul. Yes. I connect with Paul, right? So I feel like I have the right to critique the church as well as build the church up, right? So in this regard, as relates to innovation and uh, being progressive, right? Mm -hmm. I think we suck as it relates to marketing and innovation, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's my point. I am very passionate about making the church. Now hear me, we're not talking about spirituality. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the power of God. We're not even talking about, well, 20 years ago, all you need was the power of God. Here's the problem with that. 20 years ago, people were coming to church because mm -hmm. that's, what the, that's, that's what the thing to do was. Now people are not coming. So even if you're performing miracle signs and wonders, we wouldn't know because people ain't coming. People don't yeah. care. People, it's, it's another culture now. So uh, I appreciate us going door to door, mm -hmm. telling people about Jesus, but you can reach thousands of people with phenomenal marketing mm -hmm. at one time than you ever could going door to door. I want you to tell us in your experience, how can specifically talk to black folk? Yes, sir. Not white people. We ain't talking to we ain't talking to white Christians, white churches. We're talking mm -hmm. to black folk. Okay. How can African American people, churches, pastors, is let's do this. Is it important for a pastor to jump on the wave of marketing? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Talk to me about that. Tell us why. So basically, you know, you say this all the time, the message stays the same, but the method has to change. And so with social media, Google, and all of these other innovative platforms, if you're not on the platform, you're, you're not going to win. No one's going to know about you. So you have to invest in your marketing. You have to invest in your presentation. You have to invest in actually getting ads to show, even when you're not up, while you're asleep, ads are running. To Paul, stop. You, you, you preaching good, Doc. <laughs> So you mean to tell me that my church can grow while I'm asleep? So I'm a pastor, mm -hmm. and while I'm going, while I'm asleep, my church can still be doing two things: the gospel can still be being preached, mm -hmm. and my church can still be growing while I'm asleep. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, I'll give a prime example. On Sunday, we went live, and of course, we had people in the building, and we had people online but it was like 2 33 a.m monday morning when i woke up i saw that someone had opted in for more information from our service because we have automation that will speak to them while we're asleep so if they opt in on the live they will be able to get a response back from us and so when a person is actually able to respond you know i'm a human i can actually respond but we have automation set up but if we were not, you know, promoting our service, if we weren't running ads, they wouldn't have been able, and if we didn't have automation, they wouldn't have been able to opt in to get more information while I was asleep. Someone would have manually had to do that, so. 
Wow. Yes. So how how do I start the what what are the steps I need to take to start advancing in my marketing as a pastor? So I would say the steps to advance, I would make sure that you have um, an administrator for marketing and a creative. You need both. They work hand in hand. Um, the creative will help grow the ministry. They will make sure the ministry's brand looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And then the administrator will be sort of the strategist. Um, so they'll go out and get the resources. For example, Google offers um, $10,000 a month for all 501c3. Ooh. And you can get that free, you know, free of charge. It's for all 501c3 organizations, which churches are. And you can just start there and then um, make sure that you invest in your team. You know, you send us two trainings. We train with other people, other churches. We train with other um, people in the marketing industry to make sure that we're growing and developing. So the first thing is get you at least two people, a creative and a strategist slash administrator. The second is to find the resources. And the third would be to invest in your team. Find the resources, meaning finding the money. Yes. And then invest in the team. Yes. Invest in what though? Invest in the people and invest in their equipment and all of the resources they need to operate. So invest in the people, meaning invest them into their training. Yes, their training, their development, um, everything that they need. If they, if so they pause. You didn't know how to do what you're doing now. <laughs> yes, I did not know. Here's what the black church does. We like bodies, mm -hmm. but we don't like to train people. Mm -hmm. We we hear me. At, this is how I operate as a pastor slash CEO. And some people don't agree with uh, the pastor now is a CEO. Well, you have to be because guess what? After church is over and listen, 90% of my paid staff, there's no word called Jesus on any, yeah. on anything. Jesus is not on the document. When, it when it's time to turn, listen, taxes, all these things, Jesus ain't on there. So on Monday, we become CEOs and then on the eve, and when we have to do counselings, we are pastors. But when we talk about making decisions, training people, getting people the right training, we are CEOs. Hear me. If you, this is what I, I do not believe in what I'm not going to do. I'll say this. What I'm not going to do as a pastor is just invest in loyalty. We are not going to grow old together. Shanice, I love you. You are not in this ministry to grow old with me. Yes, you are, you can be on my team as long as you are growing with me, mm -hmm. but I am not committed to us growing old together. <laughs> yes. So as soon as you stop producing, as soon as you stop being innovative, as soon as you stop being creative, as soon as you stop working, your work ethic declines, I'm going to find somebody to replace you. You don't have to leave my church, but mm -hmm. you can't be at the table because we are in, we're trying to really take the gospel to this culture that's constantly evolving. Yes. And we are and we, like to be, let's have a spiritual conversation. The enemy, we, the church is under attack, man. Yes, so what do we do to counter the, if the enemy is in marketing, if the enemy is in marketing, you know where you can find porn at now? You don't have to go, you don't have to go to the porn shop to get a dirty magazine. All you got to do is go to your phone. So if porn is on the phone, why isn't your church on the phone? That's good. This just makes sense. Yeah. So this is how we counter the enemy by making sure we are where we, we are where the enemy is. So I'm saying we have to if we're going to do that effectively. I appreciate your heart for God. Worship. Hallelujah. Great. Chandler Moore. Right. I appreciate that. But I need you to be competent, too. And the way you make sure your teams are competent is to invest in their training. Do not let anybody do anything. Until they are trained, trained with the big dogs. So you said, make sure they are trained. And what else? Make sure they have the resources. The resources. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me ask you this question. How much money should a church, let's say a church from the, uh, all, here's, here, here's, a, here's a quote that I've stolen from Dr. R.A. Vernon. Every church won't be a mega church, but every church can be bigger than what it is. Mm -hmm. All right. So a church from uh, a church that says the average church in America is the average church size in America is 72 to 75 people. All right. A church from 25 to 75 people. How much should they be investing in marketing? What's the church size again? From 25 people to 75 people. 25 to 75. I would say you could get away with, you know, 400 to 600 dollars um, a month. 
Yes, a month. Okay. And, and where should that go towards? I would put that on social media. Um, the lower the budget, the more, I'll say, focused the funds need to be, right? So if I had $25,000, I wouldn't put all $25,000 on, on social, social media. media. I, would, I wouldn't even put it all in digital marketing. I would mm. do maybe half in digital marketing. Now, what's the difference between digital marketing and social media marketing? So uh, digital marketing includes like Google, includes social media, it includes, you know, everything digital, uh, YouTube marketing, all of that. And then the traditional is, you know, billboards, postcards, gotcha. getting out into the community. So, but the, the smaller the funds, you, you have to focus those funds and you have to tailor them. So um, 400 to $600 locally, that would do, that would do some good for a church of 25 to 75. All right. Now, so what, what? I hear a pastor saying this, I don't believe in that Instagram type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. How many people come to our church? How many visitors come just from Instagram alone? I would say every the, week, the bare minimum is three. And that's like a worst case scenario. I think on a Sunday we've had maybe 15 all come from Instagram. Um, and recently it's been heavier because we've invested in real advertising since that's new um, Instagram reels. So when you, when you don't invest, you won't see growth. You'll just be maintaining what you have. You may grow at a slow rate, but if you fail to be on social media, if you fail to go on these platforms, two things are going to happen. You're going to lose people to the enemy, to the culture. You have um, psychics on Instagram. They're doing their lives. They're promoting their business. They're promoting psychic readings. Or the people you could have had will go to another, another ministry. Church. Yeah. And this is the same across, this is across the board mm -hmm. with regular businesses. Yes. This all businesses. That's all we talk about all day. So you're either going to lose business to your competitor or the client you would have will go somewhere else. They will spend their money in a different way. All right. right? So if I'm an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. I have a small business, I think, uh, <sighs> there are 7 million, I think 7 million in the U S registered LLC owners mm -hmm. or something like that. If I'm a small business, I'm starting up my business. Mm -hmm. How much money should I invest into marketing I was versus product? I would say I would start with about 500, um, depending on your manpower. Um, recently, I've experienced that people are so excited about investing in marketing that their operations and their behind the scenes is awful. So I have a client, I've generated like so much, it's, they're called leads, I've generated so many leads for her, but because her, her process, her system, her operating system, her administration is not where it needs to be, the leads that I'm generating are literally falling to the ground. So she's not able to see the fruit of what I'm producing for her. So I would say, make sure you have all of that in order and then invest 500 would be good. Um, and again, the smaller the budget, the more focused it needs to be. So that would be locally. Now, if you're talking about, you know, running ads all over the United States, you need to be doing at least a thousand bare minimum every month. Yes. Bare minimum. And this is across the board. This is church and regular entrepreneurship. Yes, this is this is everyone. And a thousand is like on the low, the low end. So in your opinion, since you how long have you been working administratively for me? <laughs> since since I you came, came back. back. <laughs> came back. All right. Yes. So would you say in your experience at the table, at the administrative table, should you have a business mindset at a at a ministry table? Yes, you have to in order to grow and to sustain growth. Um, and I'll say this being on the administrative team has advanced me personally because I understand that I have to evolve. So um, when I came, I never thought, you know, I would go back and get my master's. I never thought I would be a marketing exec, but I've had to transition and I've had to change. So I've had to get an education. I've had to go to many trainings to just advance my knowledge and advance myself. Um, I've had to learn from you as it relates to CEO mindset. So you're able to see the fruit of what you produce throughout the ministry. So have, have I helped you in any way in your secular business? The only reason I have my secular business is because of this ministry. Um, literally, I was working in finance at Norfolk Southern. I was a revenue accounting analyst. I don't even know what that is. I was working at- You were somewhere, you don't even know what you were doing. <laughs> yes, I was, 
I just took that job for the money. And so it was a bad experience because that's not what I wanted to do. And so I left that. I came, I left, and then I came and sat under your leadership. You told me that the first job I had two offers. I had an HR offer, and that's what my degree is in. And then I had an offer for the small business. It was a startup company, and they weren't paying me. Literally, I was making less than half of what I made at Norfolk Southern. And I was like, you know, this is going to be a major adjustment. And you said, take that because that's you. Because I sat under your leadership, my life literally evolved. And everything you wanted to do in ministry, God provided that to me through my career. Um, I'll never forget you were, it was a Sunday, you said, I want to do social media advertising and all of this. And, you know, I wasn't thinking about it because I don't do that at my job. And so I walked into my job the next Monday. They said, hey, you know, we're changing positions. You get an automatic promotion. Like it wasn't up for discussion. And my salary increased. And this was three months after working there. And I told you I made less than half of what I made at the other job. So I was still making less, but it increased after three months. And they trained me on how to do social media advertising. And then I brought it back to the ministry. And so that's how that's so how, it how much have you learned in the secular industry that you brought back to your church? Literally everything. Like whatever you wanted, God would somehow put me in a position because because I was connected and because I was open, God put me in a position to learn what you wanted and I would bring it right back, literally. Um, and that's that's why I do believe people need to go into the workforce. Um, they need to get training. They need to learn discipline. So everybody don't need to be at just just trying to work at the church. Yes, they, they need to build some type of learning system that can expose them so then that they can bring it back bring that back to the mm -hmm. church to advance the kingdom of god yes absolutely got you now let's i'm before we go because i you a boss no you a boss <laughs> no. hey you, ain't you, ain't you, ain't you, ain't you? yes sir. what y'all be doing hey what do the little noise y'all do i'm not about to do that <laughs> no no sir. all right cool cool i'll let you i'll let you slide all right so look you have a bachelor's degree mm. in what HR. You have a master's degree. Almost. Almost. How you, you're, you're, in, you're in your master's. Yes, sir. What's, what are you, what are you, what you taking up as we say in the South? So because of this ministry and because of my career field, um, I'm taking up digital marketing. This will be my first digital marketing. You said taking up. Oh, I'm studying. Okay. See, I'm studying digital marketing mm -hmm. and I will have an MBA in digital marketing in August of 2022. Oh, son, don't brag on them. No, that's not, that's not it. What, is, what? The kicker is. What is it? Because I sew and because I'm faithful, I've literally barely paid $300 for this degree. What? Yes. Because you sew and because of what? Because of my connection and because I'm faithful, my degree is free. And I will tell you this, um, I've been wanting to go back to grad school and you know this. And um, I got with Elder V and she said, you know, wait, be patient, you know, rest in God. Yeah. I waited two years and I, I used to send you the schools, all of that that I wanted. I waited two years. You picked my school, you picked my degree. I went in there, I applied for um, an assistantship. They said, no, we can't give you a full. They gave me a partial, but someone ended up paying the other half of my tuition. The next semester, I told the lady, I was like, hey, you know, I'm going to have to resign for the program from right now. And she said, well, we can just give you a full scholarship. Oh. And I've literally been on full scholarship since. Wow. Yes. Because you are connected and you so. Yes. I think this testimony. Let's raise an offer that. real quick, like Shanice. <laughs> no. uh, church, if you go to Encounter Church. <laughs> You need to start sewing. And if you don't go to Encounter Church, you need to sew to your pastor right now. Yeah. Sew to your church. Sew to your do you sew to your pastor? Yes. You need okay. to sew to your if you don't, if you don't, and if you don't have a church, you need to join a church and start <laughs> sewing. All right. Now, let me now you you let's listen. If you do we're not gonna talk about everything, mm -hmm. but I want them to hear the humanity of who you are. Do you mind sharing with us briefly the tragedy you went through? Um, yes. Yeah, so in 2018, I was in a car accident um, and my grandmother was a fatality. My grandmother passed away next to me and I was temporarily paralyzed, temporarily mm -hmm. paralyzed. Um, and to this date, 
many people don't know, but like I still deal with legal matters regarding it. Um, some people think, you know, you can just walk away and you only deal with grief, but I deal with grief. I deal with depression. I deal with anxiety and I deal with all of the legal battles to this day, to this day. So how have you found the courage, the tenacity, uh, the strength to endure and continue to push and build business and still serve God, still serve your ministry, still serve your pastor, you're in school. Did I mention build your business? And you got to deal with me. You got to deal with me. How do you how do you do that? It's it's the grace of God. Um, and I will say because I am pro, you know, like counseling and all of that. Um, I, I did and I still do seek counseling. Um, I went through a program that was specific for um, grief and they kind of coached me through that. But I just have to maintain a discipline. Um, I think tragedy reveals a lot about you. And I think in the before the tragedy, I thought I had a lot of discipline. But when you're under pressure and when you go through certain things, you can really see like I have no discipline at all. Ooh. And so I had to work to a place to build it. I'm still building it, but discipline will sustain you through through tough times. There's a lot of things I don't feel like doing. Um, a lot of places I don't feel like being. A lot of people I don't want to be around. But discipline allows me to to go into those environments. Which leads me to our last and final topic. Tell us about work ethic. You mm -hmm. work at this church. You've been working with me for years now. You build your, you, you're in school. You graduate in August. You are the CEO of your own marketing company. And it's not pop pop. <laughs> you work with some serious people. How, what's the work ethic like? Um, I think work ethic is developed, um, which is why I don't agree with people who want to quit their jobs because they just want to do their own thing. Um, you have to sit under someone to learn work ethic and discipline. And I've been able to sit under you and sit under other people to learn that. But you get out of life what you put into it. No one's going to hand you anything. And from somebody like me, I learned through tragedy that you can do everything right. You're still not exempt from life circumstances. Jesus. So the best thing you can do is put your best foot forward. The best thing you can do is be disciplined. The accident had more emotional um, impact on me than it did financial because I was disciplined financially. There was there was nothing that I could not sustain through that because I was disciplined financially. So life already has everything it's going to throw at you. You're not going to be able to stop what life brings, but you can be disciplined enough. You can have a work ethic. So when you go through ups and downs, you're prepared for both. So... Yes, work hard. And then the last thing is being focused in one area is how you build results. Everything that I do is all the same. So I work a job. I worked at the church. I do my own business. I'm in school. It's all related to marketing. So I'm able to focus all of my energy into one field. And that and everybody, everybody is not fortunate enough to do that. That's yeah. that's that's good. Some people mm -hmm. don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. So God has really favored you and blessed you. Yeah. Uh, that's phenomenal. That is phenomenal. So there is a young lady or a young man out there and they are, they are, they are aspiring to be in your situation. What's one encouraging thing you would tell them? Find a pastor. Woo, son! Y'all don't know no good. <laughs> that's, that's really the only advice. Don't take another class. Don't pay for another you know, online academy so you can figure out how to build wealth. You need to sit down and you need to find your pastor so that he can establish purpose in your life and he can direct you to what God has for you. G and us. Yes, sir. Shanice, there are people, they got all their grandmamas, all <laughs> their mamas, all their daddies, sisters, cousins, and will not get out of the bed and make life happen. Mm -hmm. You are special. You are phenomenal. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. We love you. We're supporting you. Y'all, that's <laughs> bandwidth. You need to uh, expand your capacity. Yes. That's it. I'm done. Be blessed. Not with the ED. Be blessed.